Welcome to Hollywood Crime Scene. I am your host, Joe Hollywood. I'm joined by Maginos Pete. Hello, hello. And Andrew Walker. Yes, hello. Oh, no Walker. nickname this time, huh? I uh, actually came up with that with the help of we, uh, got Chat week? GPT. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, good God. You're relying on the machine. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Uh, no, the only good one was Script Walker. Script Walker. All right. Like Skywalker. Well, it's good what to know that done? even the AI can phone it in. <laughs> yeah, no, it's terrible. Yeah. There's Walker, Texas filmmaker, which might be better. I don't know. And we have like a it. guest with us. We have a special yes. guest. Yes. Mark, welcome. Or you can call me Marky Postal. Marky Postal. Marky po- <laughs> Mark Dudley himself. Marky Postal in the house. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so today's podcast, it's going to deviate a little bit from our normal themes of unsolved crimes and murders. Uh, but something no less tragic, we're going to be talking about uh, the history of racism in Hollywood. Things could get heated. This could get in. Oh. in itself a crime. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, you know, Unsolved at that. <laughs> the frustrating thing is we all know the impact that movies have on society. You know, uh, when Saturday Night Fever came out, nobody was wearing large collared uh, suits and dancing on lit disco floors until that movie came out and then everybody was doing it and and so hollywood has this huge impact on society and affects their uh, way of thinking and so when hollywood puts things out that are negative that has an impact on society as well and and it can affect the way people uh think and speak and and uh, what might have been said in hushed tones uh, in a boys club, you know, somewhere and not in uh, society. Now, all of a sudden, a movie can come out that makes people think that it's okay to say these things in public. So uh, Hollywood has always had an impact on um, whether or not people felt comfortable saying certain things uh, in polite society. Um, Now, we can go all the way back to the early, early days of Hollywood uh, one movie that a lot of people point their finger at as just having such a negative impact, uh, even though a lot of people may agree that this was a great movie and is uh, deserved to be talked about in uh, in classrooms about filmmaking. But in 1915, uh, they released Birth of a Nation, uh, directed by D.W. Griffith. And one of the, the biggest complaints about the film is that it depicts the Ku Klux Klan as heroes, as saviors who come <laughs> riding in on their horses to uh, free the the nation. Uh, They even had actors in blackface to uh, depict African-Americans as mindless, lustful savages and an act of danger to white Americans uh, to justify violence against them. Upon release of the film, racial violence increased across the country and um, the Klan reformed. They were like, hey, we're in the movies. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that later that same year, the, the Klan felt empowered to reform and, and create their damage in society. Um, one thing, I don't know if this is going too far or not, but there's a, you know, I like to go to Hollywood. I like to visit Hollywood. And there's this really beautiful shopping plaza next to uh, what used to be the Kodak Theater where they have the Oscars and everything. And they used to have these beautiful, large, like, elephant uh, sculptures and statues that were an homage to Intolerance, which was an early silent film. And it was beautiful to look at. Well, then somebody said, well, you know, Intolerance was directed by D.W. Griffith, who also did Birth of a Nation. So what did they do? They took a wrecking ball to that artwork and just leveled it, destroyed it. Now, is that taking things too far? So I'm kind of curious if we want to go around the table. Uh, what place in Hollywood history does Birth of a Nation deserve? Imagine those people. What, what's your thoughts on the topic? Uh, I think I think it should stand as it is. There's no, I mean, don't hide from it. It, it. it is what it is. That film, you can't, you don't want to erase it. You don't want to say, oh, we don't acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. That was the time. That's what they did. From a technical standpoint, it was a marvel. You can't escape the fact that Woodrow Wilson said, I want to screen this in the White House. (laughs) And I loved it. And Woodrow Wilson, the American president, 
This is right after World War, you know, this is right around the start when World War One is going on. So, you know, the president co-signed it. What are you going to do? And as like I said, as a cinematic from a, from a technolo- technological standpoint, great. Story standpoint, I could believe it. He said it was written <laughs> with lightning, is what would be what he was say. Yeah, yeah, written with lightning. Yep. Yep. Kind of like the described. Ten Commandments. Wow. Because <laughs> it, it was a powerful statement. It made you know. It made you know America, especially if you talk about white America, feel prideful, or it struck a chord. Whatever D. W. Griffin was trying to go for at the time. That and uh, there was another film um, based off of what uh, 1903's Uncle Tom. That and 19 and that and Birth of a Nation. When you lump them together, right around the time they were considered like you know this is how. This is what how Hollywood should be. This is the time. Like I said, so I'm I'm not the I'm not the I'm not a big fan of like erasing stuff because we see that now a lot. It even happens in uh, cartoons. I was talking to Mark about this. In when it comes to Looney Tunes, mm-hmm. there's an infamous cartoon or famous thing where Yosemite Sam plays a Confederate soldier. Bugs Bunny's going down to the south to go get some carrots, <laughs> and then he comes walking across dressed as a slave. Walking across, and he say, crosses the literal Mason Dixon line. Yeah, he crosses the Mason Dixon line, <laughs> and there's a scene where he goes, "You traitor!" You know, because he's sing, he's singing uh, Yankee Doodle, because your seventy Sam asked him to sing it, and he says, "No, don't whip me, master! Please don't whip me, master!" And he has oh, this horrified man. expression on his face. In a way, it, it was saying that you know, oh, I don't want to be associated with with slavery, but people just took it to, oh, you can't, and they they take that they took that cartoon out. Yeah, you know, the Redford Theater will sometimes show some animations and stuff, and every once in a while. You see when you go, I don't remember seeing this on TV, yeah. and then you go, oh, I see why. Yeah. Like uh, like showing a native in Africa yeah. with, you know, giant lips or whatever, and you're like, oh, no wonder they haven't shown this on Saturday morning. So It's the early it? 70s. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they and, sure showed it back then. But even recently with com- the com- comedy show Community, mm-hmm. they had a show about Dungeons & Dragons in there where Ken Jeong plays a character in a drow in that that race in Dungeons and Dragons is a dark elf, so they have black skin. Mm-hmm. So he was wearing. They they took that episode out because they didn't want because people oh he's wearing blackface even though the show calls it out as the joke is like oh we're just gonna <clears throat> ignore the hate crime over there yeah yeah you know <laughs> but I I think it's there acknowledge it don't hide from it right. because when you try to hide from it you, it's as if you're trying to forget that past and when yeah. you so I I don't agree with them destroying it if they wanted to have moved the structures it's the same thing with the the Confederate statues. Yeah. Take them, put them in a the museum. Yeah. Don't don't run from your past. It's there. Acknowledge yeah. it. Yeah. 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 That seemed a, a little extreme. Um, Mark, you said that you saw this film what in a college class. Uh, Talk well, about your experience well, seeing this film. Uh, again, I grew up in a in a what could be considered an Afrocentric house, uh, household. So I got Is that this, a- Afrofuturistic. Well, no, not just yet. I got to that later. Oh, but okay. uh, <laughs> so I grew up in a pretty Afrocentric household, so you know I got a chance to see a lot of stuff that your average kid wouldn't see, right? And so I, had, uh, my uncle, I think it was my uncle, uh, my uncle had actually uh, during the early days of the video cassette, you know, he got a hold of a copy of it. Those he things. wanted us to see it, and so you know he he we, he talked about it afterwards and whatnot. And then in college. I had to watch it again for a class. And, you know, as we're watching it, I'm looking, I'm looking at the professor, he's looking at me, he's looking at the rest of the class, you know, to see the reactions. And, you know, they're horrified at what they're seeing. It's like, hey, man, this is what it was. You know, I mean, you got to put things in context. Context is very important, you know, at the end of the day. It's yeah. not, you know, I'm I'm with uh, <clears throat> with with with, um, with Pete and, 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 and Drew here. It's like, look, yes, it happened, and you don't want to go and hide history. That's just that's the that's just not what you do. You don't learn anything by doing. It. Yeah, right. Yeah. But you but, also want to be careful about having certain people out there embrace it and using it as a rallying cry. Uh, sure, that's, you know. So you got to yeah. be careful there too. That's that, that's the only point I I was gonna say is I I haven't actually seen the movie. I probably never will see it. I have no interest in watching it. But from what I know about it, uh, just from pop culture and everything yeah it's just like a confederate if there if there might be a confederate statue in a use university in uh mobile or birmingham or in atlanta uh, don't don't glorify these people I, like the confederates and don't glorify films or the specific offensive content of this film like i said yeah. 
Um, I, I haven't seen it. I'm sure it is very well made for its time, but don't don't glorify. Don't go for the make America great stuff. Yeah, you, you know, you want to educate, but you don't want to put it up. Yeah, on but a pedestal, I mean, but know? at the yes. time, there was still protest against it, so it wasn't yeah, like it was cool. a welcome movie. There was there were plenty of plenty of people that well, good, especially good. in the black community, that were like, this is a good horrifying to thing to see. You know, yeah. it, it wasn't just like widely embraced. But that being said, you know, when the president screens it, you know, there's plenty of people that loved it, yeah. but there was enough people that spoke out against it, say, even though that was 1915, yeah, and say, well, hey, what are you going to do? That's the time. So, and at that time, though. <clears throat> well, you got to understand that racism is an export. Right. Really, you know, the, the, your Hitler will go and tell you flat out that, yeah, I learned what I learned from watching the, uh, what America does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you what, know, what, South what, Africans what the, say the same thing. So. Yeah, he specifically said what white Americans did to the Native Americans. That's what he learned to do in Germany. <laughs> right. Uh, when I learned yeah. that in college, I said, mm. It really put put things in perspective about how awful it was here a yeah. hundred years ago. Yeah. Now, I want this this phrase came up a few times. This is a phrase that you know really kind of boils my blood. When someone brings up something like that, and someone says, "Well, it was a different time then," I'm like, "Bullshit!" Because let's talk about blackface. I want to talk yeah. about blackface. If you were to talk to people today and, and say, oh, my God, I was watching a movie, there's blackface in it, they go, no, it was a different time then. It was acceptable. It was never acceptable. Blackface was never access, ex acceptable. In vaudeville circuit, they were mocking uh, African Americans. They were portraying them as dim-witted and clumsy. And, and so anytime someone says, well, it was a different time back then, no. African Americans were offended by the portrayal uh, in vaudeville, why not give those roles to African Americans? Why have white white actors don blackface to play these roles? And and so you, you could you could argue and say, oh, it was a different time back then, but it wasn't. It was still offensive back then. It's just like you said earlier, it was marketable. People paid sure. to go see this on stage and on the screen, to and they would elbow their friends and laugh and not realize that it was hurtful, that it was harmful. I don't think they care. <laughs> I, don't gave a, I don't think they gave it there. Yeah, but I think I think what the, also a deeper context is what percentage of I would say non-black Americans were we're, uh, we're okay with it. I should say, you know. Yeah, it's hard to say. It, you know, I saw like like what would be the equivalent today that like you know it's like they took a pretty, poll. You mean it's like, pretty what, taboo. What like you know we don't. It's on its way out, you know, but some people still, are maybe 20, 15, 20 percent of the population are really into we it. We need a whole yeah. other episode you know, for that. One. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to gauge, like, obviously, I, I can only, I, none of us were alive at that time, but I'm trying to gauge what to get a better grasp well, on that how offensive black that was. That contingent that you're talking about right now, Andrew, it still exists. Well, yeah, that I know. That contingent is still here. You're right, and you, you touched on something there. Yeah. It is definitely still well, here. Sure. Yeah, I, I saw a comedian recently, and again, this makes my blood boil. He goes up there and he kind of looks down, and, and I'm talking about f literally and figuratively looking down on the crowd, and he goes, come on. He goes, you as a white American, if you lived in the age of, of slavery, you would have a slave because that's just what they did. And I'm like, I call, I'm like, Bullshit! Yeah. There was half a country who was offended by slavery. Yeah. There was a war over this that almost split the country sure. in two. Not to mention the cost. Like that was an elite. You had to own a plantation right. to even afford slaves. Yeah. So don't stand up there and say, "You, Joe Hollywood, <laughs> if you lived during slave days, you would have owned a slave." Bullshit! Right. What he should have said. Don't tell me though, that. What he should have said is that. You would have upheld white supremacy because that's what all of them did back then. They definitely that was, was the upholding, right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. yeah, and and you know there are people who say, well, it wasn't about slavery. The Civil War wasn't about yeah, slavery. Really it was right. about states' rights. Yeah. States' rights to do what? Yeah, right. to do what? Own slaves. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting heated here. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do yeah, some hot some heat, some hot uh, sauce in there. Yeah. So I I get angry when when somebody says, oh, you would have done it differently back then. No, there were. There were people who John always John Brown found didn't it. do it differently. <laughs> John Brown was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> I mean, if you even think about it, even when it comes to the Revolutionary War, the, the British abolished slavery first, 
not all you know, there it wasn't all everything wasn't altruistic but the you know east india treaty company was like we can't compete with slavery so we need to abolish it and then the 13 cons like well we're not giving up slaves so yeah. we're not going to tax us without representation yeah <laughs> some of those goods were slaves so we're sure. not going to get rid of it and it took us a couple decades after that to finally learn from what the uk did Right. Well, actually, uh, we're attempt, talking. Attempt we're talking to. almost a hundred years yeah. later. Because well, I, yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah. Keep, right. 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 Within the context. But I still. But yeah, still. Yeah. But that still goes back. You know, even the founding fathers with slavery. But yeah. then even when they formed, the, even when they said, now what do we do? Like we, we really, you know, maybe the British had some. We should have bought slavery. Oh, then we're going to split right now, right yeah. here. Well, like, I watched huh. a documentary recently about Benjamin Franklin, and he he was a racist son of a bitch for a good part <laughs> of his life. But then he had an epiphany, and he started a school for the children of slaves, and he realized that. Slaves are human beings. And so then when they sat down to write the Constitution, he was like, let's put a little thing in there, anti-slavery. And they were like, hold on, Ben. Don't go talking crazy, because had he done that, the country would have fractured into two. This ain't Paris. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think and, that, and, I think, and, I think and, that and, electricity fried with your, fried your brain a little. And a certain uh, percentage, I don't know what, a certain percentage of those other signers had slaves themselves. Exactly. Oh, yeah, like and so there would be uh, that that might be big enough to shred the whole constitution to have to start over. You know, it might be that You're, big of a deal. That was exactly the point. And Frank I mess with that capitalism. You yeah. know what's going on. That there's always the, yeah. the money-making aspect, I'm sure. But, even, but like I said, even the North said, you know, like, okay, we're not going to be com- completely okay with slavery, but we're going to embrace the Industrial Revolution. We don't need slavery. That's it, because it's... we got crappy farmland. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the South was like, no oh, cotton up here. we can modernize. You're not going to take our way of life. Right, our right. states' rights, yeah. the war of Yank- northern northern, no, northern yeah. aggression. It was oh, a lot. A lot of it was cultural differences too, but a lot, to go along with the slavery, uh, my, almost all of my mom's side of the family uh, they live in northeast Georgia. Yeah, I remember you and, saying um, this off 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 camera. Yeah. And uh, even even today, uh, in 2023, like when I go down there to visit, or if they come up here to visit, there's still that, that northern thing, and though. southern like divide and yeah. wow. we have we have to joke about it because sometimes <laughs> it's like oh okay comedy's <laughs> the only way to approach right. it right right but and and that's just a a matter of i don't know 600 miles away you yeah. know it's just, yeah. it just it still lingers today but yeah. we've come along heck howell michigan kkk stronghold yeah. in howell michigan <laughs> right? yeah. i mean come on still to this day no, I, I put it's how it's funny because I used to have to pay my insurance out there, dude. When I was in my twenties, yeah. I go out there and look. They were trying to shit that that they were trying to shit that hard, man. <laughs> that people treat me so good and hard and, and how I said maybe I should move out of here. <laughs> you know, and the funny thing is, I I, I got my own. And then you saw <laughs> Get Out. Oh yeah, yeah. Then I saw Get <laughs> Out. Right, right. You know, I had to stop. My, my one and only parking t- uh, speeding ticket I ever got was in Howell, and it was from the only black cop that probably existed in Howell, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> and he was ultra cool. So I mean. Go figure. He's like, this doesn't have to get funny. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> no. But no, Joe, you were talking about something when, the, when it comes to blackface. You know, you, you see, we see politicians, you know, Justin Trudeau got in trouble for it, the governor of North, uh, North Carolina and, and anybody else. You could probably, ha- they look at their photo album. Sure, sure. But what's the, what's the line between mocking people or portraying someone out of, out of like sheer comedy? Like for instance, you take Tropic Thunder. Oh Robert yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Yep. yep. Is a method actor playing a black man goes through that thing. So was, would that be a cons- dude playing Plain another dude, dude. <laughs> acting like another dude? I know, I know. And you got an Oscar it. nomination for it. Yeah, for yeah. Con. Now he's he's playing a character who's ignorant. So that's probably the dividing line there. Even though that movie and they still call generates. out that ignorance in the movie. Exactly. Brandon Williams. They may, oh. It's it's almost like Blazing Saddles. Like, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Blazing absolutely. Saddles. Yes. You yes. can say, oh, I can't watch Blazing Saddles. They say the N word all the time. But the the movie is a statement on yeah. ignorance and yes. racism. So, but I, I don't know. It, it's but hard. that's where people I think like just oh we were just you know it wasn't meant to be offensive. I'm like oh, and you also got to look at the time too. But in the seventies, you know that's you know people even on TV in the seventies people were, were were looking that thing in the face. You look mm-hmm. at it all in the fam. Yeah. You know, look at the Jeffersons. Look at Good Times. Good They're time. looking at that thing in the face. Anytime yeah. you need a payment, Good <laughs> Times. Anytime you need a friend. You know, it, it, it's I got it. those shows. Love that show. Sanford and Son and Yeah, Sanford and, and Son, yep. too. Yep. And even to a lesser extent, all in the family. All just, a more just, an extent. Right. Every family in America had access to these TV shows, and they were 
educational on something. And they weren't, they weren't afraid to go there. Yeah. I think we're yeah. more afraid now, which is weird compared to what it, you were willing it, to do it, back then. In certain con- content, yeah. 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 There was a there was a scene on uh, Sanford and Son where he goes to court. Have you guys seen this? <laughs> where Fred goes to court and he goes in there and the court is just filled with black people. And, and goes, what did he say? He says, is that all you do is arrest black people? And he's like, no, we arrest white people. He goes, all I see is N words. And in then there. he says enough N words to make a Tarzan movie. I was like this. Oh, hey. <laughs> and it was an opportunity for Red Fox to open America's yep. eyes. But that's what this he said. Is exactly. What is that's what he used it for. Country. Exactly. He used it to open America's eyes. This yes. is what he's dealing with. Yeah. 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 But, you know, going back, when you, <laughs> one of the most iconic films, because, you know, when they, when Hollywood was, uh, transitioning from silence to talkies, what was widely known as the first talkie? The jazz singer, Al Jolson in blackface, performing this vaudevillian character. Now, historians kind of look at that and say, wow, well, he, wasn't, he wasn't being malicious. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. But it's unfortunate that that's the movie that is shown in museums. Like, oh, this was... The, the switch to talkies. I was like, why that one? Yeah, but we got to be careful, though. And we really have to be careful. And when you, it, it, it's, about, it's, it's, it's about, about sanitation, right? So you, yeah, you just, you just don't, to me, it's just my opinion. You don't want to sanitize things to the point to where, you know, people want to hide behind something else. It's like, look, this happened. You know what they say about history. You know, if, if you if you don't understand, you're doing it repeated. You yeah, gotta exactly. understand. You gotta put it into context. You have to understand that this is why this thing is unacceptable. You know, you need right. a living testament to why this thing is unacceptable. Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, you you have nieces and nephews. Yeah. Joe. So if you ever take them and they ask you, you could provide the context. You yeah. say, listen, it's it's regrettable. Yeah. If, yeah. Exactly. If Uncle Joe was there. And I had power. I wouldn't have made that. That would not have been the first transition to talkies. It would right, not right. have been that. That would not have been the defining statement. But back then, yeah. they didn't either they didn't care, like Mark was saying, that they were kind of hoping like, yeah, this will be the transition. Ha ha. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, all you can do is society say, okay, next time we have another major jump, things like that, themes like that won't be the, rep- the flag bearer. Yeah. yeah. I made a little list of movies that, uh, like I said, I'll be sitting there watching some of these classic musicals, really enjoying them. Uh, Babe in Arms, uh, 1938, stars Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney, and boom, they break into a 20-minute-long blackface minstrel show where the entire cast is in blackface. Uh, Fred Astaire, I love Fred Astaire. He did a movie, 1936, called Swing Time. Another blackface scene in that. Man. Uh, Tar- Tarzan 2.0, huh? You got that right, brother. You put, we put that on, on, on the truth right there. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood Hotel, one of my favorite wow. movies, 1937. Another blackface scene. Um, hey, Joe, you ain't watching no movies anymore, huh? Uh, I, you know, I still watch them. I just have the fast-forward button ready to go. I'm going to go over there and break Joe's fast-forward button. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Is this... Is this an appropriate depiction of blackface or an inappropriate depiction of blackface? 1986's Soul Man. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. I I, I actually recently see Thomas Howe. I watched I watched the trailer, so I got the gist of it, and then I read up on it, and I I they try to pass it off as it it's kind of making fun of it itself, but well, I don't know. The point of the movie is the character who takes what some pills or something to darken his skin experiences life as a black man so you could argue well it's teaching life lessons about the difference between white america and black america. lois lane did it in the comic yep <laughs> oh really yeah, yeah lois lane got turned into a, a, a an afro having black woman I she did, did. she sure that. did it's to what? walk what to yeah. spend one day what year in, what, what? this was in the early 70s i think i have to look that up. was she like writing an article on something it's on the cover too where uh-huh. lois lane gets turned to a black woman wow. and then she so she spends like i don't know what one day a day or whatever and all of a sudden <laughs> she understands the whole damn thing <laughs> she's like Man. And you're like, all right, okay. I'm like, sure. oh, Lois, I don't think you got it all today. <laughs> now, I'm going to I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here. One of my all-time favorite sketches on Saturday Night Live was when Eddie Murphy experienced life as a white man. Those sketches it is one of the funniest sketches. 
Just you don't have to pay for that paper. Just yeah, take it. Just and take it's it. hilarious. So we're going to go to get the loan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pay us back or don't. No. So I would like to think that if if the movie or the sketch or the comic book is trying to make a point about the difference between white America and black America, you almost want to say, all right, I'll concede it. But really, it's it's not for me to say I it. I mean, you, you know, Joe, the thing is this, You go with though. intent, yeah. But see, this yeah. is the thing, Joe. I'm about to do some things that I'm about to tell some secrets here that might get me shot up. Oh, <laughs> oh we got it. We got it exclusive. No, we got a Hollywood hey, look, crime, crime scene exclusive within, right our, within our own community, we have different stratifications, right? And... uh there's a concept we used to call we when we grew we call it the uh, bru, the black brulee class, right? So basically, that's like the black upper class, and then you have after that you have what they call a talented tenth class. That's something a concept that W. E. B. Du Bois uh, regrettably piloted. He 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 pioneered that concept back before what they called the Niagara Movement, which was the precursor to the NAACP, mm-hmm. right? Really. So in the Niagara, so basically he's like, well, you know, it's ten percent of us that are super talented, and we have to be the ambassadors for Black people, and you know, blah 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 blah. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. It, you had a lot of conflicting movements going on back then, especially in the twenties, right? Wow. And so, a lot of a lot of the things that you know we view as, oh, you know, we're going to boycott that or whatever. It was actually the Brulee class that was organizing those boycotts. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of the people who weren't part of that Brulee class were just happy to be working. Okay, I got you. Okay? Mm-hmm. So the Brulee class always tried to basically, uh, they, 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 they were like the top of the class structure in the black community, but that wasn't enough. Right? So you, a lot of the stuff that you've seen happen and a lot of movements that you've seen were pioneered by the Brule class. So yeah. hmm. does that go to like when you're saying like when Hattie McDaniel won for right. like but, people saying, Oh, you're you're perpetuating the stereotype, but she was like, Hey, but I'm working. Right. But again, it's not like she she didn't feel the same right. way, but her reality was different. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Same thing with Clarence Muse and Teresa yep, Harris. They exactly. wanted to do other roles, but they could only get roles where they're butlers, maids, prostitutes, or yeah. something else like that. And that names. goes to the skin color deal in the black community too. Yeah. Light skin, dark skin. Right, right. You know, that's all part was wrapped up in the same thing. Yeah. Because you notice even in the movies, the black movies, whenever you see a lead woman, she's always light skinned back mm-hmm. in those days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like your Halle Berry's mm-hmm. and stuff. Yep. That's one thing I noticed watching the most recent Oscars as uh they were interviewing people on the this year was the beige carpet. Um, but I noticed that a lot of the, I don't know why I noticed it specifically with the, the female actors, all of them had that same sort of mocha, light skin look to them. And I'm like, is, is this where humanity is going? Like, what would happen if someday the entire world, after, you know, all mingling, co-mingling, that everyone was just a same shade of mocha? Will yeah. that happen? Will we w- what will happen fly- is this. <laughs> Because we all came from this, so literally, much, this is what's gonna happen if you do that. I think South Park <laughs> joked about that, it, like way in the future they're coming. Like it seems like everybody comes like, yes, uh, John, everyone's coming back, and there's a, there's like a, a a beige sort of dark ca- dark tan color. Yeah. So let's let's uh, ask that question in reverse. Millions of years ago, or whatever, were there more ethnic, more different colored people? Oh, absolutely! Like because of pur- like, like actual blue, actual purple, actual <laughs> green. Yeah, no, who knows? No, yeah, like going, you know, and and now yeah. uh, just bio, bio, biological. We don't need no more that evolution. We're just, <laughs> we don't need no more that damn blue, right? <laughs> no, I, I. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, With evolution. Who knows? Yeah, we, I mean, which which ones were like? Oh, blue's not going to survive. Hey, green's not going to survive. It's too I, hot down here for that blue. <laughs> on Twitter, I, I I just came across a true facts thing that said that, um. Every single person that is alive today with blue eyes, such as myself, can be traced back to a common ancestor named and, Chuck. And it wasn't, <laughs> and it, it wasn't that long ago. It was like six thousand years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I and I'm like, wow, that's very interesting. Hmm. So I need to do a little research and find there out go. who that person was. I'm <laughs> telling you, his name's gonna be Chuck. Chuck <laughs> or Chuck. And what and what part of Europe or whatever, Middle East? Who knows? 
But yeah, let's let's talk yeah. more about uh, how African Americans were depicted in films in the early days of Hollywood. You know, we were talking about Gone with the Wind. Sure. Um, you know, it's a beloved movie. It's uh, adjusted for in- inflation. It's the highest grossing movie of all time. Yep. Um, it's epic. Uh, but the compl- sweeping. Don't the, get sweeping. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the complaint that people have about the film, so much so that HBO recently pulled it off and added a disclaimer and before putting it back on. But the complaint that a lot of people seem to have is the portrayal of the happy slave. Happy darky is what we call it. <laughs> Did do you think that in reality were there? You know, I, I think about Django Unchained with the, <laughs> oh uh, yeah with uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam Jackson, Sam Jackson oh, character yeah. Steve Django. You bet. is is that. <laughs> Yeah. Did, I don't know. I, I, I can't. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's funny. I was watching this YouTube uh, video a couple of days ago. Uh, let's see, two guys I was watching. One of them was talking about it. Uh, I don't know if we can give shout outs on here. So <laughs> I'll leave it at that. There's a, a, a guy's YouTube channel. Was, we were talking about this in particular. He's got it on right now. He's talking about the, the, the house Negro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's going into I mean it's interesting and he's also going into the real depth of it and stuff so I appreciate that okay. but the thing is uh, those people you know they they, they they it's not so much that they it was the happiness it's like hey man you gotta fake it to survive right right sure. you yeah. know what I mean yeah that's the thing I you mean know? you'd rather be in the house than in the field All right, right. And, but there were horrors in the house yep, too there were, yeah, yeah. there were horrors in there let me ask you if you know this name Dudley Dickerson. Do you guys recognize the name Doug Dudley Dickerson? I might be an ancient relative, but uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've never heard the name. Think Three Stooges. Think The Servant. Oh, who yeah. Was played okay. For yeah. comic effect. Yeah. I've seen know. that guy. Now, I know you're talking about now. Yeah. And it was uh, relating to what you were saying earlier. You know, he got a lot of criticism for playing these, you know, house servants or whatever. And he loved it. He was like, I'm making money. I'm That's living right. in Hollywood. So how do you judge someone who's making a living, taking the roles that are offered to him, and then getting cr- criticized by blacks and whites, I would imagine, for perpetuating a stereotype when he's just trying to earn well, a living? Well, one thing is this, though. A lot of those guys want to play in, 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 in a lot of the black circuit films, too, right? But marketing is marketing. So they would – some of the people in the black circuit – would ostracize these guys. It's like, hey, man, what you know? At the end of the day, I want to play stuff in the black circuit too. I, that way, I can play a lawyer, I can play a doctor, right. whatever. Right. But you know, they're ostracized. Not blaming them. This is just what was. This is uh, just the, the 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 way that the the, the just like Hollywood right now, right. right? You have ways things operate, and this was just the way that things operate. Then, yeah. You know. So now you needed black filmmakers back then mm-hmm. to cast black actors in roles of yep. doctors and lawyers and things. But you, you leave it up to a white guy and he's going to put them as servants and maids. Sure. And, yeah. Oscar Micho, uh yeah, they're, you know, it, again, uh, the, if you're a love interest, you always like skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And, you know, and, and this doesn't just apply to African Americans. Man, you look at some of those earlier films, the depictions of Native Americans yep. as oh savages. Good. Asians. Yeah. Let's talk about Mickey Rooney. <laughs> In, oh um, in the breakfast 60s, at that, Tiffany's that, the 60s. with the buck teeth. And, uh, like, I, I read a little thing online as I was researching this that um, Bruce Lee was in the theater watching Breakfast at Tiffany's, and the girl that he was with was, like, laughing out loud at at, uh, at Mickey mm-hmm. Rooney and then turned and looked at Bruce and said, do you want to go? And he said, yeah, let's go. Oh. And they got him walked out. Shoot, fun and fact. That's horrific. A fun fact. Right. And fun. Then, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you know what happened uh to uh, Bruce Lee after that, he got thrown into the side of a car by Brad Pitt. <laughs> anyway, keep going. <laughs> I watched that. That's historically <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll get me on that one. But yeah. I mean, fun fact: uh, up, up until the seventies, you know, stuff was being done like that. All right, you guys remember our buddy? Uh, I'm pretty sure you remember this, Joe. Our buddy, the crying Native American. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, wasn't Native American. He's an Italian. He was an Italian <laughs> guy. Yeah, uh, Iron Iron Eyes Cody. Yeah, man, yeah, guy yeah. was an Italian. Are you, oh, are you familiar with the the PSA where people are throwing garbage yeah. out of yeah. the car? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an Italian dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
And then uh, Arabs, the way Arabs were depicted oh, yeah, in film yeah, back yeah. there is, is savages and, and selling wives and things like that. And and a reporter had asked uh, Rudolph Valentino about that, and, and Rudolph Valentino said, the color of your skin has no effect on the level of your intelligence, you know, like the, basically they were throwing these, these questions out. I'm trying to bait him into saying something. And, and he said, don't judge someone by the color of their skin. So Hollywood has been doing it to everyone depicted as a foreigner, considered a foreigner, uh, portraying them as savages and right. stuff like well, that. I, I know you guys might've heard, uh, Clark Gable, uh, what he did on the set of, uh, of of of, of of yeah of going with the wind. What's that? He was so pissed. He didn't. He told him flat out. We talk about the whole bathroom thing. He's like, if everybody's not using the same bathrooms, I'm not playing this role. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there were lots of performers that um they would when they're traveling and going the clubs. They say if this club is segregated, I'm not playing this yeah. club Good because you hear stories about like yeah. Sammy Davis Jr. Like. Oh yeah, you're headlining, but you got to use the rear entrance, you know, or oh, Nat yeah. King Cole. Like, are you nuts? And so yeah, there had Sinatra to be people who not stood too up. happy about Marilyn Monroe did the same. Marilyn Monroe told uh, them in some club in Florida, she's like, "I'm never coming to the club again if Pearl Bailey, you know, gets treated yeah. like this." Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah Good they that. said, uh, "Was it Ella Fitzgerald in L.A.? I think, I think it might have been at Ciro's." Uh, where Marilyn Monroe was like in the front row every day. Like mm-hmm. she bought a ticket every day to see Ella Fitzgerald. And, you know, those types of acts, not not that I want to perpetuate the white savior, but you needed people like yes. Marilyn Monroe to say it's okay yeah. to go see black right. performers. Well, what's right is right. And people, you know, that's again, that's a human response. And, yeah. that, and that's just reaching down the ladder and pulling up people who uh, you with, think yeah. deserve it and are talented with you, no matter yeah. where you go. Yeah. Well, exactly. it's, it's not so much. I, well, it's one thing about the white savior, but it's like I think Mark and I had this conversation before. The only thing, only there's nothing that non-white people can do about racism. Right. It, it, it has to. You know, it's white people have to. I tell right. Nick, yeah. I'll, I'll say, we, I'll say, well, unfortunately, Nick, we didn't start it. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, we didn't put the engine in that car, brother. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, and uh, uh, you were talking, uh, Joe. You were talking about this, and I, uh, I was going to ask Mark and Andrew that. So there, uh, this one of the studies I was reading regarding film back back before a birth of a nation uh when bert williams the legendary vaudeville comedian uh wc feels that he was both the funniest and saddest man at the same time and one of the reasons was because a lot of black audiences would see when they see black folk on 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 screen they're like oh that's great uh, oh but then it's, it's that immediate regret like it's always these same roles and i can say something similar because my parents my parents are indian so when we when they first come in, they see a Indian on in a Hollywood movie. They're like, "Hey, it's an Indian!" And then there's that instant, "Oh, we recognize one of our one of our people on there." And then it's, "Oh, it's the role of you know, they're the right. servant. It's the act, fake accent, the best friend." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's it's the motel owner. It's the taxi cab driver. It's the you know, mm-hmm. I love curry. And <laughs> it's like, and they're like, yeah, "Oh, yeah. okay, yeah." Uh, at least they're there. Yeah, you want you want to see roles filled. That can be played by any actor. It's not a white role. It's not a black role. It's not an Indian role or whatever. You any actor should be able to get cast in any role. At least today, it shouldn't have to be a certain stereotype that Hollywood right. is looking. Well, you for. want the country, man. See, this is one thing, right? You know, you want the country to always constantly be trying to live up to this the hype that is created. The I- ideals. You ideals. want the yeah. country to try to live up to these sure. ideals, and you and. Again, we shouldn't stop no. until the country starts living yeah. up to these ideas. The idea of America is great. Right. <laughs> I, I think, it, and I think, like, with a lot of issues, and I think with racism is, um, since we had the first black president president recently and then um, all the recent protests, the, um, you know, a- anti-police protests, if you want to call them that, um, it's, really, it's really just brought back a, a thing that, you know, we, we have to work on. And once we get there, though, maybe we'll we'll know. Mm-hmm. We'll know when we get there. But we, we but these things have shown that we still have a little bit of, but see, little bit of way, ways to go. But you don't want, this is the thing, that you have people, there are people out here who are like, oh, well, I don't see color. I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand <laughs> what the reason behind saying that. It's like, it's about respect, right? That's the first yeah. thing. Every love comes from respect. People yeah. think we love somebody first. No, you respect them first. And yeah, it's like yeah. respect their people's right to exist as human beings. 
and uh, the right to life, liberty, and in pursuit of happiness. You know, and then that'll be a basis for us to start, you know, looking at each other and building on that, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, ultimately, see, uh, my, again, I want to get you off, off track, but w- there, there, there's somebody who benefits from all this tension, mm-hmm. right? And it's the people, uh, uh, it was, uh, I think it was uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon Johnson said this. You take the uh, poorest white man and make him think he's uh, better than the richest black man, and you'll be able to pick his pockets forever. Mm. Yep, yep. Wow. I, I, I knew said. that that was the quote yep. you were going to go with that. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that also goes back to what you were saying, Joe. Everybody wouldn't have owned slaves because nobody could afford it. You got that right. Average person couldn't afford it. So right. I'm gonna if you can't afford, it, I'm gonna make you hate that person so that you side with me. Well, I'm gonna make not you, realizing yeah, that I'm gonna make you my in, servant. Yeah. yeah, make you complicit and make you subordinate. You, you could see what yeah, type yeah. of a sociopath. John <laughs> right. Was. At least you're not. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, since since we're talking about Hollywood, I, I didn't want our uh, hour to go by without bringing up a pretty famous actor named John Wayne. Oh. Now. Uh, you guys remember the episodes of I Love Lucy where uh, he, he puts his feet in the cement at Grandma's Chinese Theater and yeah. Lucy pries him up and steals him. And so then he has <laughs> to make uh, new footprints and they keep getting destroyed. And during during that episode, he kept uh, mentioning a film that he was currently in production on called Blood Alley, I think it was called. And so eventually I was like, I, you know, I, want, I need to see the movie that he was making while filming uh, I Love Lucy. So I watched it. And I cringed. I cringed because it was all about let's get those commies. Let's get those commies. He must have said commie 50 times in the movie. And what what scared me about that is I've seen people today use that same tone when they call me a liberal. They're like, oh, <laughs> here's a I, I was get greeted. The <laughs> I walked into a room was like, hey, liberal. And it felt like John Wayne calling me a commie, you know. And this is a guy who I, I used to have his poster on my wall, the, the uh, Searcher's poster, iconic poster. And I had this 8 by 10 and everything, and I loved all his movies. Then I started learning more and more about the man, John Wayne. And on screen, he, he you know, portrayed the ideal American and American values and stuff. But holy cow, this guy was not the same guy in person that he was on the screen. Did, He's acting. I have to ask you, Joe, have you have you since uh, turned in your your uh, John Wayne action figures to Second and Charles <laughs> in, in protest? Not yet. I, I only had one figure, and it's a box somewhere, and I took the Searcher's poster down and uh, replaced it with Errol Flynn. Um, uh. But uh, recently his, uh, his Playboy interview resurfaced. Uh. Now – Keep in mind, this is a guy who sits down for an interview that he knows is going to get published in a national, popular publication. And Playboy was huge in the 70s. Like, influential and, well, existed. I think they went out of business now. Oh, no, they're still around? They're still still there. Playboy. Oh, oh, they are? Playboy. Oh, okay. How dare you? (laughs) (laughs) Blasphemy. So, yeah, so in addition to, you know, bashing liberals and commies in this article— uh, he was he was complaining about how uh, communism is being taught to uh, students and things like that, and John Wayne was opposed to it. And he said, uh, he said, I wouldn't mind if they taught my children the basic philosophy of communism in theory and how it works in actuality, but I don't want somebody like Angela Davis uh, and basically indoctrinating my kids or my kids' minds. The interviewer said Angela Davis claims that those who would revoke her teaching credentials on ideological grounds are actually discriminating against her because she's black. Do you think there's any truth in that? And then Wayne says, with a lot of blacks, uh, there's quite a bit resentment uh, along with their dissent and possibly rightfully so. Um, but we can't all of a sudden get down on our knees and turn everything over to the leadership of the blacks. I believe in white supremacy until the blacks are educated to a point of responsibility. I don't believe in giving authority and positions of leadership and judgment to irresponsible people. That's horrific. Mm -hmm. Horrific. Like, 
how could he openly and don't say it was a different time? That was early. A part of me wants to early do 70s. a John Wayne impression and do it, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and, and, and there's some people in the MAGA circles be like, okay, and your problem is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They I don't say, see the problem. They say, uh, see, if I said that today, you guys would cancel me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I have, yeah. What did he say that was so wrong? I don't understand. <laughs> the uh, the interview then said, are, are you equipped to judge which blacks are irresponsible and which of their leaders inexperienced? And then Wayne says, it's not my judgment. The academic community has developed certain tests that determine whether the blacks are eugenics. sufficiently equipped scholastically. <laughs> Uh, but some blacks have tried to force the issue and enter college when they haven't passed the test and don't have the prerequisite background. How do they get that background? By going to school. I don't know <laughs> why people insist that blacks have been forbidden uh, their right to go to school. They were allowed in public schools wherever I've been. Uh, even though they don't have the proper credentials for college, there are courses to help them become eligible um, but if they aren't academically ready for that step, uh, I don't think they should be allowed in. And I'm not going to continue with that. Look, but, he barely had the um, academic credentials for college. I don't yeah. know what he's talking about. You know, when I've heard white other white people say this, almost like like the, blacks have to get whites' permission to advance. And, you know, I, I heard someone just recently say, you know, we have to educate them on how to act. It's like, who's this we stuff? Like, well. what the hell are you talking about? And so things haven't changed that much. Like, it's shocking that uh, John Wayne, a guy who, you know, the NRA and the conservatives yeah, sure. look up to and put on a pedestal, publicly mm. said these things and believed that to his And grave. the black community wasn't shocked. No. I mean, keep no, in mind, no. it was Jesus, Reagan, John Wayne. <laughs> right. And, and I, we all know Jesus was sure. a white American. Yeah. And I know Pete knows where I'm about to go right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. He knows. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm from many different places in Pontiac, you know. I, I will admit, you know, I've had some, some, some opportunity to live in some good neighborhoods, some bad neighborhoods, whatever, right, in Pontiac, right? I'm a, I'm a product of Pontiac schools until I got a scholarship to Cranbrook. Then I got a scholarship to Cornell University. Mm. So I graduated from Cornell University, right? Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. So I'm, at, I'm, I'm walking down Willard Strait. I'm walking down to the uh, Willard Strait Union one day, and I see these uh, kids are on the, 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 the Willard Strait was our uh, soapbox, right? So I see these kids talking about affirmative action. They're like, oh, pointing you out. You you got here in affirmative action, this, that, this, that, and this. I guess they wanted me to fight to fight with them with them when I so <laughs> I grabbed the mic. I said, you know what? I said, you are probably correct. I probably got here on affirmative action. I said, but no one named affirmative action has done my homework since I got here and I'm about mm -hmm. to graduate. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. taken my tests. Right. Or took my test or did anything else. Yeah. Now and you told and you should have told them what high school you went to. Right. But again, it's just <laughs> that the, the point my point and how you worked your way through right, but high, it's just high my, school. My point comes down to the fact is that they can talk all they want to about well this guy you're in there, but hey, look, them professors when they when they give you those tests, they're not gonna sit there and be like, no. Oh, the black guy, this that, and this. We're gonna give them ten more points. Right, exactly. Points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not how it works, buddy. Or yeah. the, you were talking about the concept of permission. It's also that any form of what's perceived as black advancement comes at the cost of white. That's right. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, you're, oh, if we, if they advance and we're not, they're taken from us. Mm -hmm. How's that fair? I didn't do slavery. Yeah. Why am I being punished for, for that kind of stuff? How does two wrongs make a, oh, yeah. I love that one. Two wrongs don't <clears throat> make a right. I'm like, well, I can, I can actually square that math. Yeah. Yeah. I right. found a way, but and, that's and, a different, that's, and a, and different course, that's a different, that's a different show. You don't, you don't need me to explain it to you, but it's just, it's one of those white, white people, uh, ingrained things because, They've been in the majority for however however long in this country, yeah. And they, most of them, who have who think this way, subcon it's a subconscious thing. And me being more liberal, sometimes I just have to be like, come on, you know, you know that's not true, you know. But realizing in their mind, like subconsciously, they they might feel that way, and I I try to try to explain. But like, ultimately, that's, though, like, you, like that's that's how not real life. Is a business, <laughs> right? Hollywood is a business, yeah. mm -hmm. and if you see, even like right now, you in the comic uh, arena, it's, which is entertainment too. You know, there's this thing that recently uh, started to pass called Comics Gate, right? 
and you know your brother-in-law killed me in my face. But anyway, <laughs> this Commerce Gate thing is basically like, oh, you know, they're trying to shove diversity down our throat. They're doing this, yada yada, right? But it's like, look, these people, these companies, right? Like right now, right? They're looking at their future, and they're saying, oh, it's not going to be the same in the future as it is now. So we better start catching up. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. at the end of the day. So it's like, look, and so they were doing business back in the 20s, in the 30s, in the 40s. There was business. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't make it right, but that's the, that's the, 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 the case. You know, capitalism, racism is, is, is a tool of capitalism Yeah. at the end of the day. Well, let's, we got about 10 minutes left. A conversation that I've had with several different people over the past couple of weeks is reparations. Uh-huh. And I, I had a heated conversation with a friend of mine. I'm trying not to name names here, but um, he brought up that I, there was proposed somewhere on the West Coast mm-hmm. uh, reparations that might be as high as m- several million dollars per California, person. California, five million. Yeah, yeah, per person. And so my argument for reparations has always been that blacks have had things taken away from them throughout history against their will. There's a pretty famous story that just surfaced recently that there was a a black property owners on the West coast who had their land taken away from them by the government and was given nothing in return. And then decades go by, maybe a century goes by and they said, all right, we'll give you your land back. And then they promptly sold it for hundreds of millions of dollars. And my point is, that had they not had that land taken away from them, they were able to build equity. They were able to build wealth. They would have been able to send their children to the good schools. Yep. They would have been able to start businesses and build wealth. Yeah. They, but the American instead, dream. black business dis- districts were destroyed and firebombed and people were lynched yeah. and had things taken away from them. They did not have the same level playing field that whites did throughout America. So when someone says, do blacks deserve rep- reparations? I'm like, yes, they do. I, and, and a friend of mine, yeah. when we were talking about this, I said, I don't understand why you're so angry about it because this doesn't affect you. And, and he kind of laughed and he goes, I'm just jealous, and I'm like, that's, that describes the whole thing. Have, have you have you guys heard what Evanston, Illinois, is, is doing? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, I heard on uh, NPR the other. I think it was last week. Um, I'm not going to go too far into it because our viewers out there can look into it. But they are they're doing a pilot program of people who are specifically economically disadvantaged from uh, the racist housing policies, like yeah. red, redlining and. Yep. And uh, it's, it's it's several thousand dollars per person, and it's only mm-hmm. been given out to a couple dozen people. But uh, it might that might be uh, a good a good starting point for. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> you laugh, I know, but like I'm I, laughing for various reasons. I, various reasons. Okay, to have at it, and then we got to wrap it up. A lot. This is the thing, right? Okay, what's been done to black folks? And over for this last four hundred years, pure money's great. It's all good. Everybody, everybody turned down no check. But <laughs> at the end of the day, the United States better get with most of the rest of the European world when they give these reparations out, because it wasn't just the United States that mm-hmm. that did all this. Oh thing. yeah. Oh okay. Of course, sure. No, but I'm talking about the Arab world too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, how far you want to go back? Right, and, if, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying sure. because sure. this whole thing of slavery was taught to the Portuguese by the Arabs. Sure. So, all right, so, mm. all right, but and it's also, what, what I'm laughing is because with the, the since the culture was taken when people were brought over here and it was replaced with the only culture that could be given to them. Yeah. You know, a yeah. lot of us black folks, a vast majority of us black folks, we defend whiteness more than white people do. Right? Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen is when you give us the monetary reparations, we're going to give it right back to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, 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 rem- I remember that. Sh- I remember the that economy Chappelle- is going to get a kickstart. That's I, right. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, look up the uh, Chappelle show. That's sketch. right. <laughs> <When> yeah. they- <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's like a newscast. Yeah. But, I mean, you were talking about Hollywood uh, when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, think about uh, when The Watchmen, in the pilot episode of The mm-hmm. Watchmen, they showed Tulsa and be like, that actually happened to Tulsa? Oh, yeah. yeah what yeah, was yeah. this? Black, Only Black Wall Street. Right, yep. about Got that. burned and down. Black, yep. And you would think, you know, Hollywood, you know, they're always, the, the conservatives always say the liberal Hollywood elite. And you would think that Hollywood would be leading the way, but only just recently we were dealing with Oscars so white. And you find out that the percentage of, of blacks on the Academy board or whatever 
was like right. a fraction of what represents the actual population. So it's still a problem. It's and superficial activism. Yeah. 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 And, exactly. and hopefully we're learning and advancing sure. and moving on. And, yeah. you know, a, a phrase that always gets me really, really angry is make America great again, because that's implying that America isn't great. And I would like to argue that America has made advancements when it comes to race relations. Yes. And Victor. right now things are better than they've ever been, I think, even though there's a lot of hate out there. Yes. Um, so I think America's pretty damn great right now but there is room for improvement i go with yes. mark the idea of america is what you strive for. right right yes. right that's always what you keep, all be striving for. that's the shining hill on the the, the idea and you're going to have a lot of rough waters and and, and problems a getting whole there. bunch of birds and all the, that the, other the stuff. shine the shining hill on the yeah. beacon yeah there you go shining <laughs> hill on the beacon yeah that's right that's what i said right yeah but uh yeah well, that brain brain could be no speak but um reagan there was actually something yeah really <laughs> but re even recently on the news uh, in Oklahoma, uh, don't get me started. I was a, about to bring it up. A county, a county uh, uh, commissioner got caught because they left a and they announced the press from one of the Oklahoma newspapers said, "Hey, we're, we're going to record this, okay, guys?" So they thought and, some chicanery was going on after and, after the, 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 they're the, allowed the, to. The, so the they meeting. had permission. Yeah, yeah they left uh, it there yeah. and like kind of like what Mark's saying. Maybe they didn't even care that they were caught. They were talking about you know back in the day, we, you know, we have a couple of holes. Where I can get an excuse We can put bodies in there if we want to. They rid wanted of to assassinate the yeah, talk about, editor. Uh, talking yeah. about killing journalists. Yeah. yeah, and they're like you know back in the day, if we wanted to lynch you, they got more rights than we got right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. about the black folks have more rights than they got. Yeah, so and that's the thing that the hatred all stems from this fantasy that that. Blacks are trying to take something away. Like when you say Black Lives Matter, they're like, how dare you? Well, wait a second. What, what's being said with Black Lives Matter is Black Lives Matter also, as well as all the other lives. That's what they're trying to say, but there's this perception out there it's that the they're fourth trying word. to take something away. Your perception makes up the fourth word. And this is not just yeah. in white folk. Like I've had Indian people who've said, Oh, that why? How come uh, all lives should matter? I said. So wh why? I said, but why do why do only black lives? Matter? You heard black lives matter only. Exactly. What? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what, that's good. Was, I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell people that, that that magic fourth word. It only says black lives matter. I only see three 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 words on there. <laughs> yeah. You're you put the fourth word in. Yeah. Like. That's just yeah, hilarious to me, man. <laughs> yeah. We talk then, about this all the time. Yeah. And then when, <laughs> when they hear that, they go, Oh. uh, Oh, oh, oh! And you, it's like, and it's at this, it is at this point they realize they had screwed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So nobody's trying to take anything away from anybody. Just uh, let's all, to quote the uh, Rodney King, let's yeah. all get along. <laughs> can't, man. Y all get along. <laughs> can't we all get along, man? No, no, but that's why, like in Hollywood, Mark and I look at each other like, hey, I guess what kind of scripts are we, we're, we're going to try and subvert the process? <laughs> we're going to try and get our little agenda in there, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, kind of brings this podcast to a close. Um, any final thoughts, gentlemen, before we wrap things up? No, I'm going to turn it to our guests. Mark, yeah. thanks for coming out. Mark. Oh, man, thank you guys for having me. You know, again, yeah. you know, this is, we talk about this all the time. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, buddy, I, you know, I, it's the, 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 uh, one of the things is that I think that a lot of times we end up forgetting ultimately is this i'm not look i didn't come on this show to bash capitalism that's not what i'm here <laughs> all right but what i will say ultimately is that you know we have a a, a a special type of capitalism in this country you know and that special type of capitalism is the divide and conquer capitalism what i call it and that's why racism oh, sure. is a tool yeah it's Stoke a tool fear. Yep, yep as long as you can keep them from paying attention to who's really picking their pockets then you know through you, up, us against them, uh, uh, you know, mentality. Then you got them. And, right. ho and Hollywood sometimes perpetuates that because right. it's not. It can't be the same people from the 1800s that are still carrying the Confederate flag. So right, right. Ladies right, and guys. gentlemen, Mark Dudley for oh, President 2028. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> workshop, Mark Dudley, as I like to call it. Oh Jesus yes. Christ! All right, great episode, guys. Yes. And Thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you for watching. Thank you for Thank hosting you. Joe. Uh, yes, Joe. It's been about nine months since we started this. Yeah. Yes. And you still don't have a nickname. I just want to know, Joe, <laughs> when you guys are going to start talking about, you know, the great Marilyn Chambers and things like that, you Ooh. know. <laughs> All right. Topic future, future episode of Hollywood Crime Show. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see All you right, everybody. Good night.